Hi, I'm Rob from RobNonPhoto.com, and in this little video, we're going to be taking a kind of a little tour and a little guide through the basics of using HDR Soft's Photomatics uh, HDR rendering software. But we, what we're going to do in, is we're just going to be using it on one image, because um, the idea is to really kind of show you how, if you've got a um, fairly flat image like this one here. Um, you can use programs like HDR Soft's um, Photomatics to give it a lot more punch. Um, and just because you haven't taken three images in a row doesn't mean you can't create a HDR image. Also, you might well have uh, noticed if you've been a bit eagle-eyed that this is still a JPEG image as well. So you know you can also use something like um, uh, HDR Soft's um, Photomatics to produce a HDR-like image from a single JPEG as well. Now there's going to be a little bit more noise from a RAW photograph and you could argue that you should use RAW but for 90% for of what we do when we're working on the web or printing things out to be honest and it doesn't really matter that much. So if we take a look at this photo as you can see it's just a picture of um, some people coming off the ferry um, down at Gosport. Um, the light was fairly flat that day, there's not much contrast to the scene and um, you know we can have a bit of fun by throwing it into Photomatics and, and seeing what we can come out with. So first things first let's um, fire up uh, Photomatics and see where it is. I can't remember. Ooh, we don't want to see that do we? Let's uh, go down here. There's Photomatics. Here she comes. Right so let's load a single photo up and that's the one we want. Now what I've done for kind of speed of operation, I've downsized these photographs to 2000 pixels wide at the widest point. Um, these were taken with my Canon 600D which is an 18 megapixel camera so you know the file size can be much much bigger but I didn't want you guys and girls to be waiting around for a long time while uh, while Photomatch was rendering. So the first thing we do is we just load it up and then we just click the tone map button and then it's going to reduce noise and then bang there we go we're straight into um, Photomatic so we're working on the Pro uh, Photomatic Pro 5.0 now what you can see in the middle is obviously the photograph here <laughs> and um, this is one that's been worked on by Photomatic straight away and then what we've also got as you if you might be able to see the the squares if I click on that that brings up the loop where you can really look at uh, the details in the photograph um, so you can just check particular areas for I don't know noise or blurring or normally if you were using say uh, three images or more to create HDR you'd be looking for things like any ghosting artifacts that were, were left uh, around so that's quite a useful tool. The other thing you've got at the top is you've got this preview button and if we just click that that's the original photo and that's the one that's been um, worked on by um, Photomatic. So let me bring this bit up here and we've also got a histogram but I'm going to get rid of that because I don't really use it. On the left hand side we've got like the um, the engine if you like of uh, Photomatic the way that it works on the uh, the photo and we can change these sliders to change the effects and that I guess is the bit that can be a little bit um, intimidating but what we want to look at is over here on the right hand side these are the presets this is where the real easy magic happens and what we can do is I've just clicked on the top one I'm just going to use my arrow buttons just to go down and I've gone from default to balance as you can see the look of the picture has changed a little bit and then if we go back to the preview turn it off so that's what the photo did look like that's what it looks like now so it still looks very very natural um, but we've got a little bit more details appearing you know we can see these people always remember that these images we are creating with uh, things like photomatics they're only a starting point the idea is we get to the, the get get the photo to a point where we can save it out as something like a tiff um, and then we're going to work on it more on Photoshop or in Picasso or whichever photo editing software you want to. So don't worry about the imperfections like it not being quite straight or you want to do a crop and, and things like that. Don't, don't worry about that within Photomatics. Now obviously we can work through the, uh, the the presets on the right hand side but if you do get to a preset and you think gosh that's that's pretty good that I, I like that 
um, what you can do is you can then change on the left hand side some of the things. So we can say, well, let's see what it looks like if we make it a little bit stronger. And this will alter the local contrast. Let's see what happens. Oh, well, yeah. Or oh, how about a lot less? I eh, don't like that. Now, you might have noticed here, up here, we've got something that says contrast optimized on the top left hand side. Now, basically, these are the different ways that it can work on the image. And depending on which preset we go for, they'll be using either the contrast optimizer, the detail enhancer, or the tone compressor. But don't worry about it too much. The main thing is just to work through these presets on the right hand side to find ones you want. So there's one that says photographic, not particularly good, a little bit dark at the bottom. Painterly, this is kind of starting to look a little bit like a, um, a, a HDR image. It's quite strong and in fact if you look where these poles are, there's a little bit of haloing going on around them. Now haloing is where you tend to have a, a dark image, um, say this a pole against the sky, and the level of um, local contrast adjustment leads to a halo. But what you can do is you can play around with the strength. So we can say, well, there's a little bit of haloing there. Let's knock it back, and that will reduce the haloing. We may well think, well, actually, that's a good starting point. And again, let's go back to the preview, turn it off. That's what we did have. That's what we've got. So straight away, we've got a photo that's got a lot more detail, and we can see a lot more what's going on. We could use the loop, if we like, to, to dig in and just check that there's not like super amounts of noise or anything like that appearing especially in things like the sky yeah quite a lot of noise but again it looks okay when it when it's at this sort of distance and if we wanted to we could change things you know we could play around with the detail contrast and then we could change around the the lighting adjustments um, but what you tend to find is you, you'll probably see something you think well actually you know that isn't how I want the final image to look because maybe the color is a little bit too much but you may well think actually this is a real good starting point for a black and white image so that's painterly let's go on to painterly 2 preset again getting pretty strong here we might want to knock that back but again it might be a good starting point for something painterly 3 we're getting even more into almost looks almost like a watercolor painterly 4 <laughs> more extreme Vibrant again, a, a slight you no know, difference, but we might have seen you know, we, we're picking up an awful lot of noise here in people, so that wouldn't be suitable for this particular image. Because remember, this is a single JPEG we're working on. Um, see what we've got next. Enhanced again, you know, quite subtle. If we click the preview off, that's what it was, that's what it is. So we've got a lot more detail happening down here. We can see a lot more stuff that's going on. Enhanced two, a little bit darker. Deep, no, I don't like that. Surreal, <laughs> very strong. Grunge, again, these are sometimes the the, the the real HDR photos you sometimes see knocking around. Grunge 2, no, I don't like that. Creative, mm, doesn't work for this image. Creative 2, don't like that. Creative 3, don't like that. Soft, interesting. Again, it's always good to go back. That's what we did have, that's what we've got. It's a bit too subtle, that's not really doing anything for me. Soft 2, no. Soft 3, a little bit better, more details coming in. Smooth, not much of a fan of that. Smooth 2, no. Oh, black and white, here we go. So again, let's, so that's what we did there, and that's what we have got. So we've got a nice monochrome. Or we go to monochrome 2, bit of a darker sky. Monochrome 3, black and white photographic. No, it doesn't work for me. Black and white artistic, doesn't really work for me. And back, gone back to uh, the default. So I think probably the one that... I liked the best, you know, for a nice natural look was something like, I think it was uh, uh, balanced actually, I quite like that. That's what we did have, that's what we've got, it's just nice and subtle. Um, we can play around with the strength a little bit, just to pump it up just a bit. And once I'm happy with that, I think, yeah, yeah, I like that, let's have a look at the sky. Quite a little bit of noise, but who cares, you know. I like the detail, the fact you can see everybody. And I'm seeing this and I'm thinking, I'm gonna crop this a lot closer to get rid of some of this emptiness in the foreground and then convert it to black and white in Picasso or in Photoshop or Lightroom, whatever you want to choose. So when I'm happy now, I just click on this apply button down here and now it's gonna pop it all in. Here's my image. And what, we can, what we've got on the right hand side, we've got the finishing touch panel. And at this point, if we wanted to, we could add a little bit more, I don't know, mild contrast, gives it a little pump. Uh, we could uh, muck around with the 
colour, we can add a bit of sharpening, you know, whatever we wanted to do. But again, I always think that this isn't the final image. This is just a starting point. I mean, actually, if I crop this, it's pretty much there how I would want it. But if I say done, now what you've got to remember to do now is go save final image. And when we save the final image, what we want to do, we get the uh, thing pop up. We want to save it as a TIFF, either an 18-bit TIFF or a 16-bit TIFF. Because TIFF is a... Um, non um, it doesn't compress or it can do but in this case it's not going to compress the image at all it's not going to we're not going to lose anything by saving it as a tiff and we can then open it up in uh, photoshop or lightroom or picasso or the gimp whatever you want to do and we won't have lost any any data um, the file sizes are a lot bigger than jpegs but now hard drives are so big that doesn't really matter so let's save that out um, so i've saved that out now the, the photo is still here within Photomatic, so if we wanted to, what we could do now is we could redo with other settings. So if we do that, it'll fire us back into the program, and now we can say, actually, hmm, you know, I wouldn't mind having saving one as a black and white. Ooh, there we go, let's see if I can do it properly. The monochrome option, yeah, I really like that. Let's apply that to that one, and it's okay, but I wanna add some contrast yeah that's good I like you know, that's that's a good starting point and then I'm going to save that and again I'm going to save it as a TIFF I'm saving it as 8-bit TIFFs because they were 8-bit JPEGs but save it as a 16-bit if you want to uh, oop, I don't want to replace it now let's um, add black and white so we've saved that we've saved it out and then you know we can now open that in um, Picasso or Photoshop or whatever your uh, photo editing software of choice is so that's a really quick introduction to photomatics just showing you uh, photomatics 5 that is just showing you again go in don't worry too much about all the controls on the left hand side you know play with the, the presets on the right hand side and then save them in lots of different things um, this is the website for HDR soft and if you go to download remember you can if I'm yeah there's a free trial so download it and have a play with it first. I mean the license costs what's that $99 which is I think that's uh, Photomatic Pro 5 standalone program is 60 quid so, uh, 72 pounds including VAT. Uh, it sounds like a lot of money doesn't it but to be honest you'll get so much out of it that um, you know think how much you would spend on a filter for the front of your lens a really good filter you know really good polarizing filter. Um, I'm not saying that Photomatic does the same job as a polarizer, but it can enhance your photos in a similar way. So there we go. There's my little guide to using Photomatic Pro 5. Um, I hope that was helpful. Remember, you can email me. My email is scalespeeder at gmail.com or please visit my website at uh, www.robnunphoto.com. That's it from me and um, thanks for watching.